thank you uh, so much here for joining me on the Next Best Picture podcast to talk about your latest film, His Three Daughters. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I was uh, fortunate enough to see this movie at the Toronto International Film Festival last year oh. where it had its world premiere. And I'm just curious at this stage right now, given how now you've gone through a theatrical release with French Exit during COVID and then the release of His Three Daughters during the strike, are you feeling uh, any <laughs> sense of uh, bad luck or oh, you know, what, no. like, what's possibly going to happen next? <laughs> uh, well, look, I mean, yeah, there's definitely a part of that, that everything was surprising. I think more than anything, when the strike happened, I was like, oh, I'm, this is nothing compared to, you know, what, what it was like when French Exit was coming out. Um, yeah. But I would say that, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the thing was, is that I'm proud of both films. So that's, of course. it's hard to think about being unfortunate when the films are come out the way that you hope. And, you know, I think that's ultimately what I, I try to walk away with, especially, I mean, with French Exit, I would say I really understood the value of filmmaking for me during that process. And that translated right into how I approached this film. Like, oh, this is the thing that I love the most. It became very, mm -hmm. very clear during the pandemic. Yeah. You know, most of your films here, their releases uh, in recent years have had a three-year gap, but from Terry to The Lovers, it was a six-year gap. So I'm curious to know, can you tell me a little bit about how your time working on the television series, Doll and M, has maybe uh, impacted your work since then? Yeah, let's see. I mean, you know, uh, Doll and M happened like a couple different, I mean, like, you know, I had gone through uh, Terry, I had shot it, promoted it, came out of the film uh, theater, um, and then suddenly found myself extremely in debt and like just completely broke. And it made me want to work very, I wanted to approach something that I could start shooting quickly rather than this kind of way of, you're gonna take whatever money that you owe, or you earn, invest in yourself to write something to hopefully go. So by the time the three years you just have you're back to where you were. So there was an urgency that Dal and M gave to me, which was like, oh, suddenly I was with Dolly and Emily. We were writing together. We shot that first pilot very, very, it was just a bunch of us, just like four of us shooting that. We're using the newsroom, all the set from the newsroom to, as our backdrop. We, we just utilized what we had. And then suddenly we had an, a pilot episode and went so that amazingly, it was just like this kind of incredible time where I don't think has been repeated, where TV was already showing itself what it was possible of. And at the same time, there wasn't a, a mad rush of people going there. There was, there seemed to be quite a lot of hunger for different things and maybe different voices that hadn't come about. So Doll and M, if anything, taught me something about the, the feeling of writing and then shooting very quickly and just the going on instinct. Um, this His Three Daughters would be the closest in that way of like, I wrote it, I wrote it with people in mind the way that like how Doll and M was. And uh, I wrote it so that we'd go into production really quickly. I just, I brought it to these actors and then the next thing, once they said, yes, they want to do it, that was our foundation. Then I built it up Okay, then I went out and started, you know, finding other producers and finding money and finding locations and a crew, but it gave me the sense of uh, urgency that I felt like I probably hadn't had since since Del and M. Yeah, yeah, and there's definitely a sense of that here too. Where as I'm watching History Daughters, I'm very impressed by how well you were able to utilize the space of that mm -hmm. apartment to shoot it in a way that felt so organic and like i think i think some of us were thinking oh this is going to feel almost play like you know because it's a confined space for most of its run time minimal speaking parts but as you're watching it it doesn't feel that way at all it feels very loose and it feels very natural and authentic and how uh, not just in terms of the dialogue which is exceptionally well written but really in terms of how, where you choose to place the camera and how you shot within that space. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that that was a real apartment that they let you uh, shoot in, 
So how do you go about doing that then without the ability to like knock down walls and things like that? <laughs> I, th I think what you're saying, like ca the casting of that apartment was as essential as, as getting these actors from the, it was yeah. something like, I didn't, I didn't write for a specific apartment that I knew, but a specific apartment that I felt. And it had a lot to do with what those walls could feel like, what it feels like to have these structures to deal with in the way that you just know is real, like in the way that a soundstage, even no matter how how believable it is, and I think incredible, you know, believable sets are built all the time. Yeah. But for the crew and for the actors, for us all being jammed into a space and not having flats and not having a kind of a, you know an area, a green room area for us, it, I knew it would have an effect. I hoped for it to have an effect on us in the way that I wanted it to have an effect on the sisters and how it would unveil their relationship or bring them closer together. And it did, like we, we tried to, one of the blessings of shooting in such a limited location was that we were able to shoot so much of it in order. So that first shot is the first day and that's the first shot of our film and that's the first thing that I wrote. And you could feel us by the few days into it, we're starting to get to know each other. We're not having how to move around the room, you know, that luckily this hall where the dolly can go through that area, where we can duck, where the, you know, where every, the crew would disappear to while we're shooting in this room. We're always moving as a kind of unit, shifting positions very much in the same way that the characters are. And, and, and that was essential in the writing. Like I really, as much as I, as I possibly could. I think the thing about this experience of, of facing this in my own life with my own parents is the lack of control that I've had over it. Yeah. And, the, and the writing of it, the casting of it, the filmmaking of it has been the complete opposite. It's like the amount of control. I mean, that really was the thing that I wrote to, to the leads, which was like, we will shoot in a real location. We will shoot on film. We will shoot as much as possible in order, and I will have final cut. This will be, I, I, will, I will, if you trust me on this, I will have control, which is completely opposite of how it's felt with, with my own parents. Yeah, yeah. As, as you're speaking about your parents here, I, I, I have to tell you this, because I told this to um, the three principal uh, ladies, but I didn't get a chance to tell you this, that I saw the film, like I said, a year ago in September. Um, in January, uh, I lost my grandmother, and it was the first time I lost a grandparent, and I was very, very close with her. Um, your film helped me to better deal with that situation. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to personally say thank you for that, because there was a lot of moments that I felt like I was going through, and like, how do I say goodbye? And what does that look like, feel like? And um, this, this film gave that to me. So I just wanted to just personally I, express that to you and said, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that more than you could know. Uh, for me, the film, being around this film, having it to go to, to shoot, to be with these actors, to go to the edit, has been like the joyful experience in the midst of something that's been extremely painful. So it's it's been that for me, you know, like the film has yeah. been something that I was able to go to to express all these fears of mine of what's ahead, but also all these hopes and to be around something that I enjoy is the most, more than anything, which is which is making films. Yeah, and you've got three amazing collaborators here with Carrie, uh, Natasha, and also Elizabeth. And I wanna know for, for you, because you said you specifically cast them uh, early on in your mind during the writing stage and reached out to them personally, what quality for each, one quality would you say made them perfect for each of their roles? Well, let's just start with Lizzie. Like Christina mm -hmm. has, has to unveil herself in a very, very methodical, specific way. And just from the experience that I, uh, found myself with working with Lizzie when, in Sorry for Your Loss, I saw somebody that was able to see the full picture in a way that very few people I, I've, ever, I've ever experienced have been able to. I think the closest would be Michelle Pfeiffer, like who just understand like, okay, something that could feel very particular and extreme on the first scene, by the time it gets to this last scene has been broken down in these 
imperceptible ways, but suddenly we're here and, and Christina has revealed a lot more of herself than we have even realized. So that ability that Lizzie has able to mark a character's uh, process, you know, a character's uh, experience and process as they get to the end is something very, very particular to, to her. Uh, yeah. Carrie Coon, you know, I had seen her in the nest. I had met her through Tracy Letts. I'd seen her through other work, but I saw like a person that just like, if she's going in, she's going all the way in. And I needed, yeah. I had that first opening when I started writing and Katie just came out of me, just came out swinging. And she just said these, all these things, she said everything that she'd been wanting to say. It like, I needed that strength and that energy that I've seen with Carrie Coon in, 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 in life and in performances. And so because we're shooting this in order, I just cannot tell you how electrifying when we shot that very first scene that first day and start with this long page and a half monologue that she has to deliver and she just goes for it. And you could feel this yeah. wave come off the, off past her, onto the other actors, onto the crew, and just go, oh, okay, we have to try to meet this type of energy. And then Natasha, you know, I, I've always seen a vulnerability to the work that she's done and, and the humanity, the, the level that she was willing to tear open and show me and show the film and show, show us all her heart is something that I feel like only somebody that could have grown up in film and have film running through their blood the way that she does could do. Yeah, yeah. I do want to say uh, on behalf of all Leftovers fans, thank you so much for reuniting Carrie Coon and Yovana Depo together. Um, I really appreciate that. Are, are you a fan of The Leftovers I, as well? I have, this is, all right. So I'm one of those people that I have tabled a lot of shows that I will absolutely go to, but I, I'm, if I start something that's great, which I understand the leftovers to be, that will be the next yeah. few weeks of my life. And so I have pockets that hopefully I'll live long enough to go and leftovers is definitely one of them. But um, I hopefully, know that I read Hopefully you would see Russian Doll. I, I, I would oh yeah, well. absolutely, I did. Okay, I did. okay. Yes, yes, yes. And then right, I so know- we got, we got that covered. You know, I worked with the depot um, on Sorry for Your Loss. So that was how yeah. I got to see and go and he just, Again, it was somebody that when I was writing, I was like, oh, that's, yeah, he could bring to Benji what I really needed Benji to be. Yeah, he's a fantastic actor. I, I really, really uh, love his work. Um, J.O. Sanders, I would love to know, because it is a choice that is made in the third act of this movie yeah. and choosing to reveal uh, uh, the lady's father uh, at the end of the film, you could have kept him completely off screen, not cast an actor, you know? I'm curious to know what went into making that choice. Instinct. Uh, it was one of these situations where I wrote the script forward, so it wasn't that I was writing, I knew the destination, I knew that this father, at the end of this, what was going to happen. They were coming here for a specific reason, but yeah. I did not expect to see the father. I knew that I never wanted to go into the father's room. Um, mm -hmm. How to depict death in a truthful, honest way and dealing with you know, makeup and all that stuff to, to sell it believable was something that I was hesitant that I'd have the skills or the desire to do. And then I'm writing and then suddenly here's the father emerging and I'm totally surprised and I'm also like, uh, uh oh, like this is going into a whole different direction that I was planning for. And it worried me and it scared me. And at the same time, I look for that kind of things. I, lo I look for those surprises in movies and especially look for them in my own films, the things that make me worried and go, okay, this is suddenly I've set up a rule. I'm breaking a rule. I'm going, I, I, I drew lines and now I'm calling outside of those lines, but something, maybe something special will happen out of this. Suddenly I'm, I felt like I'd seen a film that keeps a character, an important character off a of frame. Like that felt like something ultimately very kind of like a small independent film and that bring him out brings this into something, its own terrain. And it, 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 was, a, it was a choice that was being made. And I also felt, um, 
I, that I needed to hear from this father, whether it's happening in real life or not, it's happening for us. And I wanted to hear the, the father, what he had to say about them and about himself. And ultimately, in retrospect, I just love the, the grace that film can give this type of fantasy where somebody can say, hey, I love you, I'm sorry, and here's some part of me that you may not have known about. Yeah, yeah. I did not recognize uh, Rudy Galvin as Angel in this movie. So as I'm watching it for the first time and I'm listening to the dialogue that's being spoken, I'm like, is this like someone who does this for real? Uh, which I think is a testament to the writing, ultimately, so of how uh, authentic some of the like the directness of the questioning mm -hmm. and the the blunt like the blunt uh, delivery of this is what's going to happen. You know, it's almost like the the emotion has to be stripped out of it, and you can't afford to be too sentimental when you're explaining to someone like what this process is going to be like. Um, so I have to imagine that that came from for you, real world experience, right? Of putting that in here. I, I, otherwise, I don't know how else <laughs> it would find its way into the movie. Yeah, yeah. It's come from real world and also like naming that, naming his character Angel is totally right. very, very pointed too because that's what I found working in that world. I really have found mm -hmm. uh, incredible people that also ha you get frustrated with and you feel like, the way that yeah. they are, they, they're there for a certain purpose. And it's a purpose that a lot of us are not comfortable with. And it's hard to be at peace with. And we don't totally know the plan, but they're there and they're taking the brunt. Um, yes, I, it definitely came from a very uh, real place for me. And at the same time, I didn't, like uh, Rudy, uh, Jay, um, uh, Jose Phoebus, you know, they, they came through the casting director, Nicola Busto, who I've been working with for many, many years. And I gave her this thing, you know, this, this challenge, which was like, I have very specific ideas of who these people are, but I don't know who these actors are. And the, the case of the sisters and Javon, like I knew, like I wrote it for them. That's it. So these yeah. other roles have to be as the character, the actors have to be as essential as they are to these roles. But I don't, I just have a, I have a face, I even sketched out a version of Angel that this has been, and this is again, this is not like how it normally is for me, but in this case, things were clear to the point that like, hey, I know I'm gonna, I need to edit this one myself because there's a certain rhythm that I'm chasing. Everything was specific in this way that extended to these other characters. And so I remember just drawing out an image of Angel and then uh, Rudy came in and it was, he fulfilled, you know, he, he, he brought these lines, which are not easy lines to say. He brought them in a very grounded human way without uh, keeping it the character that I, I pictured. And same thing with, yeah. with uh, Jay, you know, like I, I only met with him uh, for a moment and then he came on set. He went into the wardrobe, my, 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 Wife Diaz is also, you know, is a producer, but she also does the costumes. So the first time, a lot of times I'm getting into rehearsal, I'm part of that is just seeing them in the costumes that she's chosen, the wardrobe. So seeing him in those pajamas going, okay, now it's their father. Now it's, it's Vincent gave me a base, but it wasn't until bringing him onto set and him finding out that that chair that we got for a set actually fit him perfectly. Like it wasn't something, it just, was like, oh, this big chair needs to be a big presence. It needs to feel a person that really has this kind of burning desire to say these things and have this ability to do, I think it was about a nine pages of straight talking of dialogue that, that Jay yeah. came in there, you know, ready to do. Shot it over two days and that was it, you know? Yeah. Not no coverage, well, you know, none of that stuff, you know, just this is how we're doing it. Well, everybody delivered in this. Uh, like I said, I think it starts with the writing and, you know, you cast good actors and everything else just falls into place from there. It creates for uh, what sounds like for you was a really special and positive experience overall. And 
Um, I highly urge everyone that's listening to this, if you have not seen the film yet, please check out His Three Daughters. And uh, Mr. Jacob, sir, I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It means a lot to hear that. Take care. See ya.